Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off The Ball Network. And in today's episode, we're going to be breaking down game two of the Eastern Conference first round matchup between the Boston Celtics and the Brooklyn Nets. But before we get started with today's episode, if you are new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five star rating, like, comment and subscribe, turn on post notification and give us a nice review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I would greatly appreciate that. And so would the rest of our people here at the Off The Ball Network as well. But without further ado, let's talk about game two's matchup between the Boston Celtics and the Brooklyn Nets. Really, really highly anticipated game, especially since the fact that, you know, Boston won game one off of a nail biting buzzer beater. Jason Tatum was phenomenal in that game. So was Jalen Brown and the rest of those Boston Celtics supporting cast. You know, what I like about Boston so much in this series is their depth, their depth outside of their defensive personnel. They have tremendous depth. And, you know, with this Brooklyn Nets team being a little bit shorthanded with Ben Simmons, you know, still questionable in the series. He might be expected to suit up as early as game four and hopefully he can play out the rest of the series and i think you know if that if ben simmons is able to come back you know that it brings a completely different dynamic to this brooklyn nets team on both sides of the basketball defensively we already know what ben simmons can bring to the table a high matchup difficulty in terms of you know who's defending on any given night and he gives you another option that you can throw at both jason tatum and jalen brown defensively and you know kind of take some pressure off of kevin durant because you know kd they're making him work on both ends of the basketball we understand boston doing a great job of taking away driving lanes for him they're not giving him any specific angles to really get all the way to the basket and for kevin durant to be such a prolific mid-range jump shooter they're making it so tough for him to get any airspace for years we've talked about Kevin Durant being able to just shoot over the top of the defense but you know this Boston Celtics defense is the best defense to be able to limit a guy like Kevin Durant which is something that is just crazy to say given you know his uh, intangibles and his height and his shooting ability overall but you know Boston they have a lot of point of attack guys Marcus Smart Jason Tatum is great Jalen Brown and you know the, the list just continues to go on but you know this Boston Celtics team they also have a lot of length as well and a lot of guys who play well with their feet rather than their hands and you know, you saw that on display in these first two games. You know, Kevin Durant, in the second half of this game, he went 0 for 10. This Boston Celtics team, they don't really have any glaring issues defensively. I mean, they're going to get penalized for being such a physical defense. But all in all, you know, the subsequent rotations are great. The communication is awesome. You have uh, multiple anchors and, you know, guys like Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum's awesome as well as a one-on-one -on -one individual defender. And... You, you got rim protection with guys like Al Horford, a lot of switchability. This is just the perfect defense to be able to take away this Brooklyn Nets offense and be able to limit these guys offensively, right? I want to take a moment to discuss, you know, Steve Nash and his half court offense. The scheming is just not polished enough, in my opinion. You know, they have to go away from the style of basketball play where they're trying to just strictly beat them off their talent. Like, we understand what Kevin Durant and Kyrie can do in isolation scenarios, but this AAU style of basketball is just not going to work in a playoff setting against the number one defensive team in the entire NBA. Forcing Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving to win you the game off heavily contested long two-pointers, it's just not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it. And I don't know exactly what tweaks to their offense that need to be made i really like the action with bruce brown as a screener because he's really elevated his play in terms of being a playmaker in the short role and things of that nature kind of like a draymond green right but more so looking to score the basketball in those instances because you know the defense typically going to double durant and that's going to lead to those wide open opportunities for a guy like bruce brown but you know other than that i didn't see too much of a kevin durant screening for kyrie irving on ball we know that type of action is definitely going to allow them to get into you know some really good opportunities in in a half court setting but all in all you know this brooklyn nets isolated offense man it's just not built for the postseason and you, you're just not going to win going into you know tough environments like td garden and we know brooklyn hangs their hat on their small ball lineups and everything that they're being able to do offensively you know with guys like seth curry goran Dragic, and you know the rest of these guys but when when you're not building a rhythm for not only, you know, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, but allowing those other guys like Seth Curry, the Andre Drummonds of the world, even, and, you know, some of these other role guys on this Brooklyn Nets ball club, where you're not taking advantage of the things that they can do offensively, the little bit of things that they can do offensively, we understand they're not all that potent from that dynamic, not all of these guys, but 
you know, I look, I'm looking at the Boston Celtics, the sheer production that they got out of their bench unit, you know, including their starters. You know, they have seven guys in double figures tonight. Tatum finished with 19. Brown finished with 22 points. Marcus Smart, you got 12 out of him in 35 minutes. 16 points, 15 points out of Al Horford and Daniel Tice. Grant Williams dropped 17, had some really big moments, spotted up behind the three-point line. Peyton Pritchard got going 10 points in 15 minutes and giving you good defense in small increments. You know, those are the things that just scream championship level basketball. And I'm just not seeing that thing, those type of things from the Brooklyn Nets on the opposing side of the basketball, really. So they're going to have to find tweaks and find a way to, you know, just implement some better actions offensively. I understand why, you know, they isolate so much when they try to run actions for Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving off ball. You know, these guys are constantly getting bumped on the way to the catch. And they're not really creating any separation. They're not getting any space off these pin downs and, you know, these off ball screens and things of that nature. So Steve Nash is just kind of, you know, taking it upon himself to, you know, just kind of continue to do the isolation things. But I think with the off ball movement, it still makes the defense shift. You guys are just going to have to continue to find better ways to really utilize that action. With that being said, Kevin Durant, it's on him that, you know, he he committed so many turnovers tonight obviously credit to the boston celtics defense but when you understand that you know this boston celtics defense has a lot of guys who have great hands defensively they're really alert and they have great lateral movement you cannot be driving into the teeth of this defense right i think he was making decisions a little bit too late in possessions he was just trying to be a little bit forceful in terms of getting to the basket and that's that caused a lot of off balance shots for him luckily some of them were deemed as foul so he was able to get himself going at the free throw line but other than that you know in the first half you know kevin durant really for the entirety of this game like i mentioned you know 0 for 10 in the second half he wasn't really able to get himself going all that much he wasn't able to create any separation boston credit to them they did a great job in terms of suffocating and there was a lot of heavily contested shots on both sides of the basketball for both teams i will say that credit to the brooklyn nets as well bruce brown was the story of the night for them he finished the game with 23 points i believe and you know he's just been phenomenal and i think in the event that ben simmons comes back and he takes his minutes i think bruce brown is going to be a little bit unhappy about that but that's a story for another day if that even happens but all in all bruce brown took advantage of him being somebody who can do a lot of stuff in the middle of the floor right you know he's been playing this role where he's been utilized as a screener in their half court offense and his playmaking ability in in the short row has been phenomenal over these last two seasons right you know he started to really grow from that aspect especially you know this year just being able to make the right proper reads and the right decisions you know you can definitely tell that you know this is a guy that watches film and he tries to adjust in in those areas right and I want, I want to talk about the others because, you know, Goran Dragic came off the bench and he provided them 16 points in the first half. He did a phenomenal job of, you know, really picking apart this Boston Celtics defense and taking advantage of, you know, bigs and pick and roll drop coverage. Scored on Daniel Tyson in a few instances in those defensive coverages, right? And in the second half, you know, he wasn't really able to get too much going. I think he just kind of fell out of rhythm. It's tough when you have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving who are so ball dominant. And even when you watch this game, it didn't really feel like they were all that ball dominant, to be quite honest, especially Kyrie Irving. You know, he was just not featured in their offense enough in the second half. But, you know, defensively in the first half, they did a great job in terms of keeping Boston off the offensive glass. And in the second half, it was just the complete opposite. All the things that Brooklyn was doing good on, on both sides of the basketball, they, they just were not able to continue to sustain those things, right? They started giving up some second chance opportunities for Boston. And, you know, that kind of sparked some of their runs, right? Boston, they were able to, you know, knock down shots in the corners, all second chance opportunities. Grant Williams in a half court setting has been phenomenal, especially from the corner. And you would think, I understand them trying to give up those perimeter shots and corner opportunities to guys like Al Horford and Daniel Tice, because I guess you can live with that you have to give up something if you're the uh, Brooklyn Nets you, you don't want this Boston team to just be firing all cylinders Jason Tatum getting himself rolling in one-on-one -on -one coverage and being able to make the proper reads in, uh, as a facilitator in a combination guard in this league same thing with same thing with Jalen Brown being able to score in one-on-one -on -one coverages and I thought Seth Curry in the first half did a really good job in terms of being able to limit Jalen Brown from an offensive perspective. And it, it, it wasn't solely Curry. The Brooklyn Nets defense, they did a great job of shrinking the floor and suffocating those guys and forcing them to take some heavily contested shots. Because, you know, especially a guy like Jalen Brown, his uh, his real role in his team primarily is to score the basketball. We understand what he is as a, as a defender. We know he's not the most polished playmaker and facilitator in this league. But one thing that they the Boston Celtics definitely expect him to do is score the basketball at an extremely high rate and for Seth Curry to be able to kind of negate some of those things 
credit to him. Brooklyn shot 58% in the first half, and a lot of it was purely off them getting in transition. They really did a good job defensively. Brooklyn is such a weird team from that dynamic because, you know, in the regular season, they just struggle so much. And it's been like that for the last two seasons, right? This year, they're ranked 20th in defensive rating. Uh, in the beginning of the year, they were definitely much better. And those in the makeup of this team looked a little bit different. You know, you had Javon Carter, you had DeAndre Bembry, James Johnson was getting a ton of minutes. But, you know, once the Kevin Durant injury occurred and, you know, had to shorten the rotations with guys, you know, being out of the lineup. But their defense definitely started to, you know, kind of fall apart once again. You know, it's, it's, but once the postseason rolls around, you know, this Brooklyn Nets team, they can do some things for you defensively, especially just as far as just pure effort. You know, Kyrie Irving, you know, not deemed as a defender, but, you know, he's definitely, you know, when he's locked in, he's definitely somebody that can do a little bit of negating and being able to get within the uh, airspace of some of those taller defenders. And I think that was smart for Steve Nash to put Jalen Brown on Seth Curry because of those similar things being able to you know uh, have a shorter defender get into the airspace of some of these bigger guys and you know just making things uncomfortable for them because you know they're just constantly feeling somebody right up under them as they get into their jump shots and things of that nature but all in all you know boston won this game purely off of their defense and their defense is the reason why you know they have home court advantage in this series you know number one defensive rating in the entire nba they've got the personnel to be able to limit this brooklyn nets team that's very isolation centric with their switchability they're able to you know get to guys like seth curry kevin durant kyrie irvin all those guys on the perimeter and they have the proper rotations in the uh and still despite you know robert williams not being in the lineup they still have a little bit of rim protection as far as al horford to a certain degree but but all in all, you know, Brooklyn kind of gave this game up away. They gave Boston second chance opportunities off long rebounds, like I mentioned. Jason Tatum did a great job of just making the proper adjustments in the half court, you know, not forcing things as much. He wasn't playing very forceful, mixing it up a little bit on offense, making the proper reads out of the pick and roll. Wasn't able to do a whole lot out of post-ups tonight. Like I mentioned, you know, Brooklyn did a great job loading up their defense. And they wanted to force the ball out of his hands. But... You know, other than that, you know, Boston did a great job. You know, Marcus Smart contributed. Everybody contributed, even Peyton Pritchard. He came in and gave you probably a good solid five minute stretch where he was defending and knocking down a few perimeter shots on the outside. Really, you know, kind of pro prolonging that Boston Celtics run that they had um, to close this game out. But, you know, other than that, you know, Emei Doku did a great job in terms of his adjustments tonight. You know, it, it started with the offensive glass on offense for them and defensively you know they were just locking in a little bit better being able to kind of limit those second chance opportunities and more importantly they just played their they just stuck to their defensive game plan and they just kind of grinded this one out um it really helps your chances when you know Kyrie Irving has an inefficient night same thing with Kevin Durant and uh Boston is definitely you know the main reason for that but you guys let me know what y'all think about this here in the comment section thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode with me here on the ball fake podcast if you're new to our youtube channel or you're listening on apple Podcasts or spotify make sure to give us a five star rating like comment and subscribe turn on post notification and give us a nice review as always but outside of that it's your boy nice chunk of Benny. you're listening to the ball fake podcast and we out praise god <laughs>